Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets, because as you can see over here on the right of your screen, Bitcoin is currently trading at around $6,345, up quite significantly from its recent low of around $5,860, which it hit about 36 hours ago. And in the 36 hours since we hit that, Bitcoin has managed to climb and crawl and claw its way back up above the all-important support level of $6,000 and the zone of support surrounding it. Based on this recovery and based off the seeming bounce that we have actually properly gotten off of the level of $6,000 and based off of some other indicators that I'm going to show you in today's video, one of which I've never featured on the channel before, and also based off of the information that the Bitcoin shorts and the Bitcoin longs are telling us, I do believe that the chances of a new Bitcoin rally forming are increasing by the minute, and I'm going to be breaking all of that down and more in today's video, guys. But if you enjoyed today's video, definitely consider dropping a like, hitting that subscribe button, and smashing the notification bell, guys. We do cryptocurrency videos every single day, and I wouldn't want you to miss any of them, so let's get right into it. Like I said, Bitcoin is currently trading around $6,350, and if we look over here on CoinMarketCap, we can see that not only is Bitcoin doing pretty well over the last 24 hours, the rest of the market is as well. If you go and watch yesterday's video, which will be linked up here in the top right, Right. If you go and watch yesterday's video, you will have seen that 96 of the top 100 altcoins were red, and that was not including two uh, stable coins that were green. So 96 of the top 98 proper cryptocurrencies were red, and that is quite the opposite today. We see only five non-stable coins that are red. We can see uh, Aurora, Populous, Identicoin, Moac, and Walton Chain are red. The rest of the proper cryptocurrencies, not including Tether and TrueUSD, are green. These guys need to get their act together. You guys are just putting it, you're just being, that's just shameful. I don't know what you guys are doing. But the rest of the cryptocurrency market is doing quite well. Nano is up about 21%. Uh, BAT, Basic Attention Token, is doing pretty well. Funfair is doing pretty well. These are all names that I'm sure we're familiar with. Bitcoin Gold is also doing pretty well, up about 15%. That's an interesting one to see. But overall, the altcoin market has recovered a little bit, and it does seem that there is a bottom forming in the altcoin market. That's not really what the focus of this video is today. It's mainly about Bitcoin, and Bitcoin's daily volume over the last 24 hours is hovering around $4.5 billion. Ethereum's is hovering around $1.8, and total market volume is hovering just under uh, $13.5 billion. Uh, Bitcoin's total market capitalization is just under $110 billion. The most important thing that we want to look at here is that Bitcoin's market cap did not fall below $100 billion. If we come in here and we look at the chart, I'm not... Off the top of my head, I think it fell to about 101 or 102 billion dollars in market volume, or excuse me, in market capitalization, which is perfectly fine. It's fine if it goes down that low. It just needs to stay above 100 billion. If we look over here, it's going to fall down to about 103. No, excuse me, about 103 billion dollars right over here. Like I said, about 36 hours ago when Bitcoin did initially pull back below $6,000. It's very important that we stay above that level. $100 billion is honestly the most important support level on the entirety of the Bitcoin chart. More important even than $6,000 because what we saw back over here in late June is that Bitcoin completely disrespected $6,000 and we actually got support at $100 billion market capitalization when we double bottomed on it over here. So if you guys are looking for support levels to keep an eye on, that is one of the most important, if not the most important support level on the entirety of the Bitcoin chart right now. That is extremely important, so keep an eye on that. Uh, total market capitalization is back over $200 billion. As we can see, that was a level that was kind of concerning to a lot of people, and including myself, that we had fallen below here. Because uh, yesterday when Bitcoin, or the day before, well, yes, yes, yesterday when Bitcoin was down here, and no, actually it would be the day before yesterday. The candlesticks are throwing me off. The day before yesterday when Bitcoin fell to set uh, $5,860, the entire market was falling as well, and total market capitalization did fall below uh, $200 billion, which was not something that we wanted to see. We didn't even want to see it go below two, uh, $250 billion. Unfortunately, we did go below 250 but we are back above 200 As you can see, we fell down to about $190 billion. This isn't really a support level in the same way the Bitcoin support level is, but it's more of a bullish or bearish indicator to me to try and get an idea of where the market is going in general. So I would very much like to see this come up and get back above $250 billion. It'd just be kind of a bullish sign. Anyway, there's a lot we have to get to on the Bitcoin chart today that we haven't talked about. And let's go ahead and start with a little bit of candlestick analysis, actually. There's a couple of different things relating to candlestick analysis. One of them I've never shown you before, but the first thing I want to talk about is this formation right here. This red candlestick right here is what's known as a hammer, and a hammer normally comes at the bottom of a downtrend, and it normally signals that the bulls are at least likely, or at least have the ability or the potential to actually get a new rally going, and at least have the potential to get a little bit of strength coming back in. Normally it signals a bottom, although it's not a very strong indicator, it is normally a signal of a bottom. So when you see a hammer like this, you see a short body. The body has to be, uh, I, I believe the technical definition of a hammer is the body has to be about half uh, the total height of the wicks. 
it's kind of a short hammer, but that's a pretty that's pretty much a textbook definition of a hammer, which is normally a bottoming pattern. You do see these quite often at the bottoms of charts. And actually, we're not just seeing a hammer on the Bitcoin market. We're seeing it on just about every single market. We can see there's a hammer on the Ethereum chart right now. There's kind of a hammer on the XRP chart. It's a very, very short hammer body. So it's not really a hammer, but it is kind of a similar concept. Bitcoin Cash, we saw a bit of a hammer. Uh, if we scroll down here and we keep looking at altcoins, we're going to see a bunch of hammers. Not kind of a similar story on EOS as there is to XRP, but those are bottoming patterns and it is nice to see those kind of uh, formations coming in on the Bitcoin chart and on the altcoin charts because it does give us some indication anyway that these markets are about to have a reversal, be that a short or a long reversal, we'll see. The next thing I want to talk about is something that I've never actually covered on the channel and that would be the Heiken Ashi technique and the Heiken Ashi uh, for way of looking at candlesticks. Now, correct me if I'm uh, pronouncing that wrong. I don't believe I am. And one thing I want to get out of the way, and I want to, um, I want to be very clear at the very beginning of this. I'm rather new to using Heiken Ashi techniques, so if I'm doing anything wrong here, tell me in the comment section down below. I'm more than welcome. I'm more than happy to hear constructive criticism. So I'm not going to get too in depth of what this Heiken Ashi chart is telling us right now. I'm not going to cover how it's calculated. You guys can come here to Investopedia and read the definitions yourself. But what I am going to show you is what the Heiken Ashi chart is telling us. And what you normally see on the Heiken Ashi chart is it kind of distills the price action down in a way that it's much easier to spot different uh, to spot trends and spot changes in trends. You can see the there are much more uh, green candlesticks in a row and red candlesticks in a row. You don't really worry about seven red in a row being a big incident on the Heiken Ashi chart. That is very, very common on a Heiken Ashi chart. And a lot of times what you see on the Heiken Ashi chart is when the color changes, that's normally happening right around the time that you see a reversal in the market. You can see a rever uh, color change happened up here, color change happened up here, down here, over here. In all of these instances, were instances of market reversals. We saw it over here. We saw it right over here and right over here. Now, of course, a couple of these were fake outs. We saw a fake reversal right here, right here, a couple of fake reversals over here. But in general, when you see a color change on the Heiken Ashi chart, that typically signals that a reversal is coming. And you can use that to kind of get an idea of if a reversal is coming. And in pairing it with other technical indicators, several of which I'm about to show you, you can get a much better idea of when a reversal is coming. Now, there's a lot more things that you can read into in a Heiken Ashi chart. For instance, the wixes, we saw no wixes up here on top of these uh, candlesticks on the Heiken Ashi chart. That generally uh, signals a continued downtrend. I'm not going to get too much into more, uh, too much more into the Heiken Ashi chart because like I said, I am rather new to it. But go ahead and do your research on it, guys, if you aren't familiar with it already, because it does seem to be a very, very, uh, a very useful technical indicator and a very useful uh, candlestick t uh, type to look at because it does seem to have a lot of information. But the reason I wanted to show you that, I completely forgot to show you why I showed you the Heiken Ashi chart. The reason I wanted to bring all that up is because we are actually seeing a green candlestick form here on the Heiken Ashi chart. And we can see a couple more green candlesticks form on the Heiken Ashi chart over the next 42 to, uh, 48 to 72 hours. That would definitely signal to me that we are seeing a rally coming based on what I've just shown you about the properties of the Heiken Ashi chart and what that color change does mean. If we manage to keep this not be a fake out and we see like three, four, five more green candlesticks, that's a very good sign of very bullish sign for Bitcoin indeed. So I would like to see that continue to happen. That's what we wanted to talk about in the Heiken Ashi chart. Let's get on to the rest of our technical indicators. One thing that we have to talk about is RSI. If we come in here to the four hour, we're going to see something very, very interesting happen on the RSI. I'm going to close MACD for a second so we can see this a little clearer. A very interesting thing is happening on the RSI on the four hour. And what we're seeing here on the four hour is that we're seeing the Bitcoin price. It was setting lower lows. So we can see it was setting lower lows. And on the RSI, it was setting higher highs. That is a textbook example of what is known as RSI divergence. And when you see that, a lot of times this will happen at the tops or bottoms of trends. Now, with that said, this normally doesn't, if it's happening on the four hour, this normally isn't going to be a very, uh, Long-term indicator, this isn't predicting a massive reversal change. This isn't something that's going to predict the next month being bullish for Bitcoin. But this is going to help predict that the next maybe 48 to 72 hours is going to be bullish on Bitcoin. And you do actually see this kind of divergence quite often on the Bitcoin chart. And it normally happens around reversals in the market. We saw this back over here when Bitcoin initially pulled down here. We saw a falling price action in lower lows. And then we saw rising bottoms on the RSI. So we saw RSI divergence here. And then on the four hour, when we, when we were running up to $8,550, we saw a bit of RSI divergence on the four hour, if I'm not mistaken. We did see a bit of RSI divergence over here that kind of uh, preceded the actual decline in price action that we would see coming in the next couple of days in the next week or so following that RSI divergence. So to see the RSI divergence coming in on the four hour on the daily or excuse me on the four hour for Bitcoin is a very nice indicator to see indeed I'm I am very happy with that and hopefully that is one of the um, that we can use that at, in our basket of indicators that is telling us that a Bitcoin market is coming. That is my dog barking. I'm sorry if you can hear Jackie. I'm sure she'll be quiet. But um, yes, anyway, without <laughs> that was a bit of a distraction. My apologies. But 
uh, Bitcoin with all these indicators that we've looked at with the four hour RSI divergence, with what the Heiken Ashi chart is telling us, what we've just seen here, and with a lot of other things that we're about to cover, I do think that there is an increased chance that a lot, uh, there is an increased likelihood that there is a Bitcoin reversal coming and that Bitcoin will see a new rally forming. Like I said, I believe I said in the intro, I'm not sure how big that rally will be. I'm not sure how long it'll last. We can talk about that in another video, but for right now, I want to get, I want to drive home the point that I think there is a rally coming at this point. I've talked about in the last week or so how, how I don't really want to predict the market and say where I think the market is going because I wasn't totally convinced one way or the other, but with what's developed over the last 48 hours or so and with the fact that we did get a very strong bottom down here around $5,860, I'm much more confident in saying that I believe that a proper reversal is going to happen. Now, like I said, that reversal may only last a week. We may come up here to some of these uh, downtrends or some of these moving averages and bounce straight off them and go straight back through $6,000 and go lower. But I do believe the next couple of days anyway, the next three to five to seven days are going to be bullish for Bitcoin. And there's another reason that I believe that, and that would be no, oh, excuse me. And that would be on the Bitcoin shorts chart. Now, I've talked about the Bitcoin shorts chart quite a lot recently, but I want to talk about it in a lot more detail because the Bitcoin shorts chart is telling us a lot right now. The Bitcoin shorts chart has been absolutely skyrocketing over the last 14 days or so. As we can see down here, just a little while ago when August actually started back over here on the 2nd and the 3rd of August, the Bitcoin shorts were down here around 17,000 shorts. Currently, they're sitting at 36,000 shorts here on the Bitfinex chart. The shorts for Bitcoin have been absolutely skyrocketing, especially in the last two days. The Bitcoin shorts have absolutely been mooning in the last two days. We've seen over 10,000 shorts added to Bitcoin on, the Bitfin on Bitfinex in the last two days. And what have we seen in the last two days on the Bitcoin market? Well, Bitcoin for the majority of the last two days has gone up over the last two days. So what is this telling us? Well, the fact that the Bitcoin shorts are going up and Bitcoin's price action is going up, you shouldn't see that. You shouldn't really see that because what happens when the Bitcoin sh when you do a Bitcoin short? What happens when you short something? You borrow an asset, in this case Bitcoin, you sell it at market price, and then you buy it back in later to cover that. What that means is that when someone opens a short position, that adds selling pressure to the Bitcoin market. But nevertheless, Bitcoin is still going up. We're seeing not unprecedented, but definitely uncommon levels of shorts being added. In the last 48 hours, a lot of shorts have been added. We haven't seen 10,000 shorts be added in 48 hours in a very long time. And to see that happen means that there is a lot of selling pressure going on right now because these shorts are being opened. But nevertheless, Bitcoin is still managing to recover and actually go up here on the hourly chart. The last, 48, uh, the last 36 to 48 hours have been rather bullish for Bitcoin, actually, even though the selling pressure has been coming in from the shorts chart. So that's something that I want to keep in mind, that I want to bring your attention to, guys is that the bulls are defending this level very, very, very strongly because if they weren't, we would have shot straight through $6,000 as the shorts continue to rise here. We're seeing a lot of selling pressure come from the shorts, but we're still continuing to go up. Another thing that we want to look at is the Bitcoin longs chart because the Bitcoin longs chart is actually giving us the same signal. The last two to three days on the Bitcoin longs chart, we've seen a lot of longs just disappear, which means there's a lot of buying pressure disappearing from the longs here on Bitcoin. But nevertheless, Bitcoin is still going up. So that means that there's a lot of underlying buying pressure on Bitcoin from the whales and from the Bitcoin bulls that believe that Bitcoin is going to go up and that are forcing Bitcoin to go up against the current that the, uh, that the Bitcoin shorts uh, rising and the Bitcoin longs decreasing are giving us. So what is that telling us? That's telling us that there's a very strong bullish sentiment in the market right now. And it's also telling us another thing that we want to look at on the shorts chart is that the shorts are very overextended right now. If we come out here to the day chart, the last time we, shot, we saw shorts this high was back over here on April the uh, 9th. Back over here on April the 10th, excuse me. This is the last time we saw Bitcoin shorts this high. And what did we see when Bitcoin shorts went this high the last time? Well, Bitcoin at the time when Bitcoin shorts were this high was down here at a new low of around $6,500. I remember this vividly. Bitcoin was looking very, very uh, dire. It was in dire straits back here. And what did we see on the 12th of April of 2018 for Bitcoin? Well, if we zoom in here to the hour chart, what we saw, if we zoom out a little bit, what we saw is that Bitcoin jumped about $750 in the span of a single hour. And when you see that happen, it's a very interesting pattern. If we zoom over here and we see how Bitcoin initially got away from this $6,500 support region, what did we see? We saw Bitcoin jump $750, starting down here from $690 or so, all the way up to about $7,750, $750 to $800 in a single hour. And the reason that that happened is because of something that is called a short squeeze. And when you have a short squeeze, essentially what happens is the Bitcoin price starts moving very quickly. And then you knock out a bunch 
and I do mean a bunch of limit, a bunch of stop, a bunch of stops on the shorts chart, which causes the uh, not necessarily the bots, but a lot of the people that have uh, the shorts built into their chart so they can that they can cover their position if the if the pr price movement starts moving very quickly and they can't get to it. We saw a lot of covering happening happening on these shorts. And when you see the price moving very quickly, the price just shot straight up through all of those stops, covered a ton of short positions, and you saw the shorts tank, which continued to add buying pressure to Bitcoin, which continued to move it up. This is kind of a chain reaction of bullish action. I've used that phrase before. It causes a chain reaction of bullish action that skyrockets the Bitcoin's price whenever you see, that skyrockets Bitcoin's price whenever you see a short squeeze. And that's exactly what happened here. We saw Bitcoin shorts get way overextended up here at the peak to up around 41,000 shorts. And then they got destroyed. Short sellers got screwed that day. But everybody else who was hoping that Bitcoin would go up got exactly what they wanted because Bitcoin moved $800 in a single hour. In a single hour. This didn't happen in the day. This happened in a single hour. And that's because we had a short squeeze. And what I think is probably going to end up happening over the next 48 to 72 hours is if we don't see as drastic a short squeeze here on the chart, I think these shorts are going to start falling off. And when those shorts do start falling off, that's going to add buying pressure because when you close a short, you have to buy back in to cover that short position. When we see Bitcoin start to continue moving up, I think some of these short positions are going to start being closed. And if Bitcoin does all of a sudden move up very, very drastically for seemingly no reason like we saw over here, we could see a, we could see a, either a small or a very large short squeeze come in, which would give us more buy side pressure when we're already trending upward, when the bullish sentiment already seems to be very, very strong under us. Right now, it seems like a bullish storm of, uh, it seems like a bullish storm. It seems like a perfect storm of uh, bullish price action is coming. And if we do see a short squeeze happen, that's going to make it even better. That's going to make it even stronger. Guys, I've shown you several different indicators. I've shown you Heiken Ashi. I've shown you a hammer. I've shown you RSI. I forgot to show you MACD, but I'm about to. I've shown you the shorts chart. I've shown you the longs chart. I've shown you how well the bulls are acting and how well they're able to push the Bitcoin market up, even though we're seeing a ton of shorts flow into the market. I've shown you all these things. And based on everything that I've shown you in today's video and the MACD, which I forgot to show you, I'll show you that in just a second. Based on everything that I've just shown you in this video, I believe that Bitcoin is probably about to start a new rally and that we are going to see more bullish price action in Bitcoin. A target for where I'm thinking Bitcoin could go. Honestly, I, what I think is going to happen, Bitcoin is probably going to come up here and it's going to come up here and it's going to test resistance at this 20 daily exponential moving average right up here around $6,700 or so. And then we'll see if we can get through that. If we can get through that moving average, I'm going to be much more bullish on Bitcoin. If we can get through that, then we need to get through the downtrend if we get through this downtrend the long-term downtrend if we get through that downtrend then i think a proper rally is forming for right now what we're seeing is really a reversal that'll hopefully lead into a proper new rally tell me in the comment section down below what do you think i want to hear your opinion as always let's go ahead and cover the macd and then we're going to wrap up because there is another signal on the macd that i wanted to show you guys and that would be that the signal line is coming or excuse me the macd line is coming up here closer to the signal line you can see on the histogram down here let's bring this up a little bit more as you can see on the histogram down here, my RSI is acting up. With the histogram down here, you can see that the histogram is actually coming up here and trending back towards zero. What that means is that the MACD line, this line on the bottom, is moving up here closer towards the signal line. And it's coming up here looking like it may cross the signal line in the next three to five days or so. If that happens, that would be a bullish that would be a bullish sign. Now, of course, the MACD is a lagging indicator. So if that happens, then that means that we did actually just see a reversal in the last 48 hours. And that's kind of confirming it. But I would like to see a bullish MACD cross here on the daily chart. That would be a very good thing indeed to see. And uh, that's basically what we wanted to cover in today's video, guys. I wanted to show you all these indicators because I do believe that the potential for a new Bitcoin rally forming is quite a bit higher than it was just 48 hours ago. I think a lot of things have changed. I think the fact that the shorts have jumped literally 10,000. There have been 10,000 shorts added to the short added to uh, Bitfinex in the last 48 hours. It's very bullish for Bitcoin, actually. I do believe that that's a contrarian signal. And as you can see on the RSI on the shorts chart here, that's a lot higher than it really should be. I mean, the RSI isn't used in anything in a very similar way at all on the shorts chart. You can't do technical analysis on the shorts chart the, way, the same way you can the Bitcoin chart, but you can use the RSI in a similar way. And it does show that the shorts have been absolutely skyrocketing and the RSI on the shorts charts up here around 76. So guys, tell me in the comment section down below, what do you think? I'm interested to hear your opinions as always. I think that there's at least a uh, more than 50% chance likelihood that Bitcoin is going to start moving up and moving towards some of these resistance levels like 6750 or this downtrend up around $7,000. I'd probably put it at a 60 to 70% likelihood that we see that. And then the rest of the likelihood would be that we come down and test $6,000 once again. Like I've said about four times, tell me in the comment section down below your opinion. But that's going to do it for this guy. That's going to do it for this video, guys. I want to thank each and every single one of you for watching as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.